On the 18th of March 1994, a report comes in that the bulk carrier Oceanus has grounded firm on a reef in the Pacific. Basic research shows up the ship's vital statistics. Name Oceanus, 37,000 tons gross, built 1993, a brand new vessel carrying 70,000 tons of Australian coal. Owners and underwriters are contacted, and Vess Muller offers the Lloyd's open form, the standard salvage agreement. No cure, no pay. The location is a special challenge, almost as far away from anywhere else on the globe as one might imagine, and environmentally very vulnerable. The Venimung Reef of the small Pacific island of Satawal in the Carolines. On spec, Vesmala's salvage tug Jaguar on station in Manila receives instruction. Its 20 knot capability still means a sea journey of five days. Okay. Meanwhile, negotiations finalize the acceptance of the contract with owners and underwriters and preparations begin for provision of necessary equipment and manpower expertise. The necessary gear is hauled out of stock. Special compressors, pumps, Hosing and underwater cutting and welding equipment, not easily available locally, are checked. Prepared for shipment. And loaded for the airport. Within 24 hours of the Lloyds form signed, the equipment and the team are on their way to Guam, the nearest base to the grounded vessel. The first physical evidence of the support from headquarters. Support that will straddle the world. In Singapore, Weissmuller has its own regional support office. Its assistance will prove essential. The staff have already been fully informed of developments and made aware of the complex nature of the refloating assignment. Satawal Island is not visited often, located in the middle of the Pacific Ocean as member of the Caroline Islands. With Weissmuller salvage on its way, the island is now set to be the scene of a salvage in paradise. The Oceanus is very firmly stuck and at the mercy of what is often heavy weather in the region, the hurricane season is about to start. The area is largely untouched by the modern world. And the local population and wildlife are thus clearly vulnerable to the damaging effects of pollution. Meanwhile, Weissmuller naval architects put vessel details in the computer. Calculations are made of the optimal means of refloating her. Alternate plans are already being worked out to cover all eventualities and what-if situations. Taking into account the specific local situation, it is decided to make a first attempt to refloat the Oceanus without cargo transfer. That's correct. We try to refloat. We try to refloat uh, this afternoon. The Jaguar's 90-ton bollard pull will be fully utilized. The preparations at the site are in the hands of the seven-man Weissmuller team who have arrived from Guam on board Weissmuller Partners Tug C Husky at about the same time as the Jaguar. The 80 mm diameter tow wire is connected by the salvage team. The double drum winch in operation for the pull. The Jaguar makes best efforts to tow the Oceanus off the reef, but the cargo of coal and extra water in the breached tanks mean it is a heavy load. The proximity of the island and reef demands the greatest care in maneuvering. The attempt fails. The Oceanus is simply too heavy and firmly aground. The computer confirms the salvage expert's experience. 
The alternative plan is put into operation. Ground reaction will have to be reduced and this will involve removal of cargo to another vessel as well as dewatering breach tanks. The search starts for a suitable lighterage vessel in the area. Amauden headquarters analyzes load distribution and required cargo removal. Sufficient buoyancy for the refloat will be created by full dewatering of tanks and the transfer of a considerable quantity of cargo. A suitable lighterage vessel has been found. The Colmena is in Singapore, but with insufficient crane capacity. The local Weissmuller representative prepares to instruct the yard to ship long-reach cranes and other equipment for loading on the Colmena. The 28,000 ton deadweight Komena is rigged with cranes and prepared for the 10 day voyage to Satawal. Load spreaders are installed on the Colmena's decks to carry the heavy equipment. The presence of local offices worldwide means Weissmuller can give full backup not only to owners and underwriters of both ship and cargo, but also to its own salvage teams. Everything has to be made sea fast for the 3,000 mile voyage from Singapore to Satawal. These preparations and the available equipment have to be right. The Colmena will not easily be able to come back for something she might have forgotten. Support from A. Mauden is essential. It will be 10 days more before the Colmena is on site. Because the Oceanus is in Micronesian waters being under American protection, permission has to be requested through the Micronesian Embassy in the US. Relations between Weissmuller's US office in Palm Beach and the Micronesian authorities are good. Permission for the operation is swiftly granted. With the Colmena underway from Singapore, the salvage team arrives from the Jaguar to meet local people for the first time. It is an extraordinary place. Largely untouched by influence from the industrialized world, Satawal enjoys the fruits of freedom, but also the privations of inaccessibility. According to local custom, the Weissmuller crew bring gifts to the island chief that are normally unobtainable locally. They include two pigs and 200 chickens. Good local relations contribute to success. The team makes best efforts to get the island's only mechanical vehicle running. The sea climate has wreaked damage to a gift from the US after a past hurricane. The Weissmuller team are offered the best of local hospitality and local specialities. And the team gets every encouragement.
In return for the gifts from the salvage team, the islanders offer the team their own gifts. They are loaded on board for what might be an extended exercise. While the Colmena is steaming towards Satawal, the team prepares to implement the instructions of Weissmuller naval architects. All double-bottom tanks have to be sealed to allow full pressurizing. Because the side hoppers and bottom tanks were linked to the topside tanks, these also had to be sealed. Pressurizing them would otherwise have probably damaged the deck. The work was mainly done at night, owing to the heat inside the ship's tanks during daytime. Many meters of hose will be necessary for dewatering the bottom tanks. put carefully into place. With necessary pump capability, all in preparation for the final refloat. Finally, the Colmena arrives after its 10-day voyage from Singapore. Preparations are rapidly made to bring the Colmena alongside. This will require very careful maneuvering in the shallow waters between the casualty and the island. The Colmena's screw is high in the water, proof of a minimum draft vessel. First, the Jaguar needs to come alongside to transfer further salvage equipment brought in from Weissmuller Eimauden. Four massive fenders will keep the hulls apart during the lighter itch exercise. The Bobcat Earth Mover will be used to obtain the correct cargo weight distribution in the hold of the Oceanus. The additional 400 CSM compressor will be used to dewater the bottom tanks. The Jaguar remains on standby during the mooring exercise, while the Colmena is assisted by the local partners' tugs, the Lady Mariana and Sea Husky. The Oceanus, meanwhile, is stabilized in position by full ballasting of all tanks to minimize further hull damage and prevent untimely refloating. The proximity of the beach is a constant reminder of the shallow water under the hulls. The mooring operation is managed by Vesmuller's experienced salvage master. The Colmena, meanwhile, only has 50 meters with sufficient underkeel clearance. Finally, the two vessels are brought into position for the cargo transfer operation.
The cargo discharge sequence has been calculated on the computers in Amauden. The key here is the avoidance of stresses on the damaged hull. The long-reach grab cranes start the transfer of the necessary 14,000 tons of coal required to lighten the Oceanus and the work continues day and night. heavy-duty blue tarpaulins supported by tuna nets ensure no loss of cargo into the clean seawaters of the reef. Every effort is made to protect the environment and keep things clean. Work continues while the weather holds, but the forecasts are not promising. And as so often in lake projects, the weather lives by its own rules. Twelve days after starting her discharge task and carrying almost all of the required coal, the Colmena had to leave the fully ballasted Oceanus due to a serious deterioration in the weather. Tugs and the Colmena head for the relative safety of the leeward side of the island. The Jaguar remains on standby near the casualty. It is now decided that a refloat attempt will be made. Bravo, stop. Bravo, stop. stop! Four hours later, the Jaguar is connected for the second refloating attempt. The compressors and pumps are in full operation for pressurization and dewatering of the Oceanus. The attempt starts. The radar doesn't yet show movement. But early morning on the 3rd of May, the Oceanus finally is moving. The Oceanus propeller wash is mixed with white coral dust. There is absolutely no evidence of any coal pollution in the water. Weissmuller's salvage master in charge of the operation, together with the captain of the Oceanus and the PI surveyor on the bridge. The Jaguar does its work well. The Oceanus is refloated. With all its tanks under pressure and escorted by the Jaguar and Sea Husky, the Oceanus now proceeds under its own power to Guam. Here, it will be inspected prior to its voyage for discharge and hull repair. The propeller will certainly have to be repaired. Over its full length, the hull shows numerous punch holes where the reef pierced the 32 mm hull plates. Pieces of coral are still stuck in the holes. 
The damage could have been worse. Ballasting the vessel and careful maneuvering minimized damage to the vessel's hull. Parts of the two bilge keels and loge hanging plates had to be removed and cracks were all given stop holes to prevent growth as per class requirements. Under direction of Weissmuller, the Oceanus would soon report to its discharge port of Yosu and repair port of Ulsan in Korea. The salvage finally ended two and a half months after the first news of her misfortune. The ship was then seven months old. She was still less than a year old when returned to her owners. All thanks to some enthusiastic support from local people and the salvage expertise of Weissmuller. Thanks to and thanks from the village and the people of Sutterwell.